Okay, so we're going to pick this up live. It's not live, but we're going to pick this up and try and fix the bug in the script that we saw at the last, or at the end of the last video. <clears throat> the bug that was manifesting was basically that we had an AOB scan running and we had sort of built some structure in the script that was assuming that the AOB or the memory address that we wanted to find would always come up first in the AOB scan, even though there was more than one result. That is a terrible idea, and you should never do that. And yet, we threw good practice to the wind and did it anyway. So let's see if we can go in and fix this. On a side note, I've finally sort of buckled down here a little, or uh, buckled down is the wrong word, but I have given in, and I have made it so that I can upload more than a 15 minute video, at least I think that I have made it that way. I'm going to record a longer than 15 minute video, and I'm going to upload it and hopefully it works, but what this basically means is that I'm going to re record extended amounts of video and that I'm going to have to go back in and sort of cut them at certain points and cut them up with some kind of video editor yeah some kind of video editing program now how am i going to do that i don't know because i've never actually done that before i'm kind of making this up as i go along so it might mean that there are some hard cuts it might mean that <clears throat> there are some less than hard cuts i don't know i again making it up as i go so that being said we'll see how this goes We'll open up our table. It is in the exact state that we left it at. Two AOB scans, some comments, some entries, some processing, some returns, some registering, some memory, some definitions for our labels or functions, whatever you want to say, some injection points, and then some disable stuff. So the first thing I'm, we're going to do is before we get into fixing the bug, so we're going to just sort of do some house cleaning or housekeeping on the, on the script. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a zero here. Why? Because I want to refer to this in, in one byte chunks. Every hexadecimal digit is four bits. So you throw two together, you get eight bits. That's one byte. That, that's kind of how I like to keep it. Again, we were moving through this stuff at a rapid pace before. So I wasn't really paying attention to it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the disable section. I'm going to delete some zeros. There's no need to pad or to put all the leading zeros in there. Cheat engine, the game, the application, the OS, the processor, it knows what we mean. So that's that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this. These uh, two commented lines up here, we had the original code, or this is the original code right here. You can see, I mean, we just got rid of the leading zeros, but if you wanted to be, you know, you can see that this is, this right here is it uh, I'm sorry this right here is exactly this right here so there's really no benefit to it it's doing nobody any good but what we are going to do is we are going to get rid of it and why I left these in here before um, originally is just because I was again we're sort of moving through the stuff and I wanted to get to a certain point and we got to that point and um, and I was just, I was, there are, I had specific things on my mind at that time. And so what we will end up doing at a later date is, is sort of pasting the stuff back down here. We don't even have to paste it because it's already down here, but we will use some, uh, some function or some instructions of assembly, especially, uh, basically with AOB scan where we can essentially put this code back into inject spend point, whatever that address is, without actually having to write it out in some um, specific way. There will be no practical difference, per se, because as we talked about, fuck it, we'll just talk about it a little bit. Basically, what we're going to do is, is we will end up commenting this out, and we will do something like this. Oh, I have caps lock on. We will do that, and we will do something like, I don't know, uh, 8, 9, I forget what it was because I haven't looked at it in a while, 8, 6, E, 0, E, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. We'll do something like that. Um, you know, well, what does that even mean? Well, as we talked about, assembly instructions are really just byte arrays, and, and so 
when you disable it and you tell Cheat Engine what to put back into this uh, specific memory address as indicated by Inject Spend Point, you can just stuff bytes in there instead of actually typing out the instruction. Again, there's no functional difference, which is why I'm not really worrying about it right now, but it is uh, kind of how it's done. Or at least, you know, I'm sure there's some uh, tangential performance benefit that you get by doing that. So, with that being said, we made a few modifications. We are going to make a uh, one or two more. We're going to get rid of this stuff. We don't need to actually specify that this is increased karma during character creation or in, or decreased karma during character creation. This stuff existed because we were dealing with sort of absolute addresses, and, and then we were just bolting on functionality, which is why we added it to the decrease point label. Um or into this sort of general context right here. We don't have to worry about that anymore because we're using labels so we can be more clear, more specific about what exactly the content associated with this label is. So inject spend point, what's going on down here without even reading these two lines, you can just say, well, you know, you're spending a point during character creation. That's an implicit thing that we have because we built the script out, but uh, inject spend point, during character creation, we're spending a point, we're decreasing a point, so on and so forth. It may not be super clear to some people who jump into this and, uh, you know, are skipping videos and whatnot. They may say, well, you know, what the hell is uh, spend and decrease point? We know what it is, and if they want to know what it is, then they can certainly go back and and, and watch the video where, uh, or the videos where we built this kind of stuff out. At some point, I have to draw the line and basically say, you know what, we know what this stuff is because we've talked about it in the past 90 videos, which is absolutely ridiculous and absurd. Um, and if, if I have to constantly go back and, and talk about every little thing, then I'll be here literally until the cows come home. So that being said, let's sort of do it once over here. We have our enable, we have the AOBs, we have spend point. It really should be remove point. Do we want to, let me think about that. Spend point, remove point, decrease point. Decrease point is just not, I hate, I really hate wrestling over this stuff and there's, there's really no functional or, uh, yeah, there's really no functional reason why, but I'm going to do that. Why am I doing that? Just because it's more clear, it's clearer. I just, it decrease point just doesn't sound right. You could, it, make it spend karma, remove karma. I don't know. I just, decrease doesn't doesn't feel right in my stomach and I don't like it and when it doesn't feel right in my stomach and I don't like it then I just get rid of it this does create sort of a problem because again if you're skipping videos then you'll have no idea you know be like well what the hell is decrease point or, you know or what the hell is remove point and I thought it was decrease point this is why you should watch the videos in order Now, on a side note, this is kind of the last sort of uh, burst of creativity that I would do with the series because it's, you know, I've gotten some some good feedback about it and, and, and whatnot, but for the most part, I mean, the views are kind of low and, and whatnot, so I mean, I enjoy making the videos, but at some point, if nobody's watching what I'm doing, then I, you know, you have to sort of ask yourself, what are you doing? I mean... You could go into a closet and close the door and, and make a great TV show, but you're in a closet with the door closed and nobody can see you. So what are you really doing? And so in that sort of sense, um, nice little fix there. Uh, we'll just do user memory. Or, uh, yeah, user memory. Um, so in that sort of sense, I mean, there there's definitely some some concern on my part. I mean, I, I haven't really made it a point to advertise or anything like that. I'm not really going to, I'm, I'm would rather keep it somewhat organic, but you know, some people have watched the series and said, well, you know, it's really great. I love what you're doing. And those are the people that I'm, sh you know, shooting for with the series. They're willing to overlook my crappy microphone and stuff like that. And, and you know, some of the mistakes, like I've gone back and watched some of the videos that I've made and I'm like, you know what, you know, you're doing it all wrong. You should do this. You should do that. Well, that's why I'm doing it on the spot is to keep it somewhat organic. I mean, if I don't make mistakes and I don't go back and talk about the mistakes and fix the mistakes, then, I mean, then, you know, what are you really learning here? You're just watching me click things and type things and that's not doing anybody any good. 
the most effective thing that you can do to learn this sort of thing when it not just with cheat engine but with any sort of technical engineering topic is to fuck up and the more you fuck up the more you will be forced to go back and figure out why you fucked up and if you're good at figuring out why you fucked up then you will be very good at not fucking up and that's sort of the most indirect but direct way that i can express my feelings about why I'm sort of changing some things and, and going back and watching videos and, and changing my mind about how I want to name things and things like that. So we're going to click OK. Our script is saved. Let's double click it. Let's go back sort of once over. Looks good. All right. So we will launch the game. I almost don't even need the cam studio window open because I can just record indefinitely. Maybe certainly not indefinitely, but but uh, to a much longer extent, and uh, or at least hopefully to a much longer extent. This is the I haven't tested it. This is just the first one. But it's kind of a fixture at this point, and I, I just I don't know. I it amuses me just having it up and having to check it from time to time. Like I'm so used to doing it after 100 videos or 90 videos or whatever that uh, I, I'd kind of feel lost if it wasn't up there in the upper right. So yeah. 34, 31, 34. We will attach cheat engine to the process. We got 34, 31. A couple seconds, found the value, do that. Um, does it matter if we sync them? It's Again, it's been a week or so since I put one of these up, so I'm going to have to walk through this in my head a little bit. Does it matter if we sync the values because we're doing the increase and decrease? Um, and what are we trying to demonstrate? Now we're doing the decrease because that's the bug. All right, so we're going to do that. It's uh, 100, 103. We're going to make this 103 just to sync them. To sync them, sync the big, the Bismarck as the case may be. 103. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. And that 78. They're both 78. All right, they're in sync. It doesn't matter that they're in sync. Now that I think about it a little bit more, as I was doing that, but whatever. It reduces. Any sort of uh, any sort of spuriousness that we may, or it uh, brings down the level of ridiculousness that we may have to deal with. So we have our script, we have our AOB scans. So let's copy the first one here. We'll go down here. We'll go to new scan, make it AOB. It's going to do some hex stuff and convert it, which we don't care about. So we do that. We're going to paste that in first scan. We get one result. We get one result. We get one result. So this first, for the spend point, the byte pattern that we have is, is good to go. It's solid, as far as we can tell. The problem that we had sort of run into was this second one. Uh, that's, that's what we want to do. Which is, it only has two differing values from spend point, but we don't care about that because only one's good enough for differentiating that. So when we go to first scan, we had run into the, um, the problem where... We're getting two results. We have to get this down to one because sometimes when we start the game, it would have one result, and another time when we started the game, or I'm sorry, when for one time when we started the game, the address we wanted to stomp or the instruction more specifically that we wanted to clobber would be first, which is great because AOB scan and assembly only returns the first result. Sometimes it would be second, in which case we would get spurious results, and it would the game would not do what we wanted. It's not a total deal breaker because it's the increased karma is it sets it to 100, which is so high that who the hell cares anyway? All you got to do is click plus and you get 100 karma. But that's not the point. You don't want to structure scripts in a way of just good enough. You don't want to code in any language relative to anything in a just good enough way. That's ridiculous. Nobody is will be interested in anything you do if that's your sort of your uh, philosophy. Just good enough is some Microsoft crap. I don't mean to single out that company, but uh, don't ever assume that just good enough is just good enough. It's not. Do it right. Do it right the first time, and I'll put my soapbox away. So. This was the value during character creation, or at least we are pretty sure it is. Let's make it 100. We have to differentiate 
differentiate the value somehow. We have 92. All right. So we're not going to care about the second value because we're only dealing with the value during character creation and removing a point during character creation. So we're going to right click it, find out what writes this address, attach a debugger. Yep. We will click plus three times and we will click minus two times. So we have three, we have two. This is plus, this is minus. We will go to show dissembler. We will go uh, see if we can bring that. There we go. We'll move this over here a little bit. So we have a byte pattern, or bit pattern, whatever you want to say. For remove point, it is 8983E0000000. That's great. We're getting two results, though, as indicated by here. In this iteration of starting up the program, the one we want is actually the second one here. We can demonstrate the point by activating our script, going here, clicking plus. This will go to 100, and then we will click minus, and it'll go up to what is 11, probably like 110. There you go, 110. We'll click plus, goes to 100, goes to 110, goes to 119, goes to 127, click plus, 100, click minus, goes to 108. All right, so we have demonstrated sort of the basic fundamental flaw in our program. And the way that we're going to deal with this is that we have to come up with a more unique byte pattern for decreasing or um, for removing a karma point during character creation than what we currently have right here. So when we go to new scan, this is the byte pattern that we copied. It exists right here. We will go to scan. We have two. Well, now we only have one because the game won't wants to make a fool out of me. So we'll go to new scan. Well, that's because we have it activated. Let's deactivate the script because I'm just an idiot. Now we go to first scan. Now we have two results again. Let's go to new scan again. Go to first scan. Now we have two results. The result that we want, 1890FF4A, is still the second result. We still have a problem. So how are we going to deal with this? One way. There are a couple ways that we can deal with this. One way that we can deal with this is... We can open up Notepad, and I will basically go in, and I will copy to the clipboard the bytes of the instruction I'm interested in. I will paste them in. I will go to the next instruction. I wonder if we can do this, and we're going to test something out here. Let's see if we can select like 10 instructions. No, we can't. As soon as we right-click. All right, so we will right-click the subsequent one. We'll go here, put a space, paste it. You don't have to copy and paste it. We'll just type it in from here. So the next one is 894598. The next one is 8B83E0000000, and then 50, and then DB042483C40483EC08, 83EC08DD1C24. Basically, build up a massive byte string. We'll do the next one because it's long. E8, 0F, C8, FE, FF. All right, so we have a really long byte array, byte string. We have a really long series of bytes starting at this address, 189044FA. We could copy this whole thing in and paste it into Cheat Engine and see what happens. So let's just do that. We only get one address. If we wanted to, we could start just pulling off single values from the very end. So we could go into the field here for array of bytes. We could hit the end key and go to the end and we could get rid of FF and then go to new scan and first scan and stuff like that. That's just not how I like to do it. So what I sort of do, or not sort of do, but what I do is I right click on any instruction. I go to go to address and then I type in whatever the second We'll see now. Now we have to chop it way down because I got rid of it. But what we are we were originally searching for was something like eight B four three. Get rid of caps four three seven zero. So again, I'm taking this byte string right here. I will just copy it. We'll go back here. We'll paste it in. And now I want those two results. All right. So we have the two results. What I will do is I'll go back to the memory viewer. I will right click and I will go to address and I will type in the address of whatever the one I'm trying to get rid of is. 13543C8A. I will hit enter. Cheat engine says, great. There you are. You are now at the memory location for that. And now what I can do is I can just sort of visually 
look at this byte array down here and find out where exactly the differentiation, if you will, or the difference is between this huge byte string that I pulled from starting at this address, and I can see where the difference is starting at this address relative to this byte pattern or bytes, byte string, whatever you want to say, that I pulled uh, from the other address. So let's see, let's start. 8983E0000. We already know that's good. We already know that 4370, that was giving us, that's what we searched for. So it was giving us two results. We already know it's good right there. So let's start right here. I'm going to pull this up here, bring it a little closer. So what do we got? We got 894598. We can get rid of that. We have 8B, 83E0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, And then we have 50. So we're good there. Now we have DB, 0424. We're good there. That Those are all the same. Then we have 83C404. We're good there. So we'll get rid of the next three bytes. And then we have 83EC08. So we're good there. And then we have 83EC08. So we're good there. And then we have DD1C24. That's fine. Those are all the same. And then we have E80F4F. So there's the first difference. So there you go. That's how this is the brute force approach that you can take that I sometimes take in order to differentiate instructions or uh, to find a difference between instructions. Again, another way that you could do this is to take the original huge byte string that we had uh, pulled starting at this address here. You could paste the whole thing into this field and then you could sort of pull off the end one and go to new scan, first scan and see if you get one and then pull off one more and go to new scan and first scan and whatnot. And maybe that's a more efficient way to do it. But for some reason, it just sits better with me um, doing it this way. I just like it. So the difference started was here. So you have E8, 4F. So there's the first difference right there. And then you have C3 and then C8 right here. And then A, B, and E, C. So those byte, that is the same amount of instructions. So let's make, we have one byte, two byte, three byte, four byte, five byte, one, two, three, four, five. Those are both five byte instructions. So we're sort of operating in the same discrete uh, unit that I like to operate in. So we will right click, we will go to back. So now we are back at this address or starting at this address here, which is, uh, we clicked on a different address. So we got to scroll up a little bit. This is where originally we were interested in. Oh crap, messed that all up. All right. So what we originally had here was 8983E0000008B4370894598, 8B83E0000050, get rid of that because we're retyping it, DB042483C404, 83EC0883EC08, EC08, DD1C24, and then E8. And this was the byte right here that sort of different or that provided the difference. I want to say it was like 4F or 3F or something like that. And then C8, F, E, F, F. Now, this is really, how can we, how can I quantify this in some way? This may not be good enough. Now, why may it not be good enough? Because you can see in this instruction here, what this assembly instruction is doing is it's referencing a specific location in memory, a sp specific memory address. And if we restart the game or close the game down or something like that, the call address or call whatever that opcode does, it, it calls a function, but we're not in interested in that. Whatever this instruction, this opcode is referencing is a location in memory. And if we restart to get in, it's sort of a hard coded thing, not an offset relative to some register value. It's an actual memory address, a specific memory address. If we restart the game, this address will not be the same. You can sort of, if you've been paying real close attention, you can see that this address is sort of reflected over here in the byte string. So what do I mean by that? Well, you know, let's 
um, C8 FE. I mean, I don't know. It's it's going to be you. Generally, when you have an address over here, you don't. It, when you have a specific memory location over here, instead of an offset relative to some register, the memory location will be reflected in the bytes in the byte string that represents this instruction. So if you do an AOB scan for that value and then you restart the game, you may not find it because this address is going to change. And because the byte string is reflective of the actual instruction itself, then the byte string may change as well. So doing an AOB scan for this may return zero results if we restart the game and, and, and deal with it that way. But for our purposes, let's just, again, we're doing this on the fly. We're purposely not doing a whole lot of uh, error checking and whatnot. Like, I want this to fail in some way so that we can prove the point. Because this is exactly what you're going to be doing when you start building out your AOB scripts and things like that. This is what you're going to have to deal with. And you're going to have to know how to deal with this sort of stuff. And so, us, me failing on YouTube is a way to demonstrate how to debug and fix this sort of stuff. So again, new scan, first scan, that's good. So, you know, oh, well, all, all is well and good. So let's go over here. Let's paste this huge fucking string into our AOB scan. Is this a large string relative to AOB scan? Yes and no. I've seen AOB scans that go on for a ridiculous amount of just, I mean, you, you're the... The bar down here is like this small because the AOB scan is, is just ridiculous. Sometimes you get lucky and you get an AOB or you get a byte string that's this short. And then other times you're not and you have to use a byte string or a series of bytes that is uh, this long. So your mileage may vary. Uh, generally, I find that most byte strings go a little beyond the 79 or whatever this this mark out here. If I had to bet, it's probably like 79 characters because that's sort of a historical thing. But generally, they, they probably go out to about like the C4 level out here. So we will uh, click OK. We will uh, close the script. Or we will close the memory viewer. We will close Notepad. We will not save it. And we will close this because if we really screwed up, then the script's not going to enable. And I got to end the video at some point. So let's see if it works. We'll enable the script. Does it enable? It does. So let's click plus. Pushes 100 into that value, which is exactly what was happening. Let's click minus. It should go to 15. It does. But I'm not totally convinced that this is working because, again, as we talked about, we're sort of bleeding over with this AOB scan into what the memory address really is. Uh, because, again, it, with the assembly, assembly instructions in memory, it's sort of hard-coded. It had hard-coded some sort of memory address um, instead of an offset. Offsets are fixed, if you will, um, relative to whatever value is in the register. Whereas when you're hard coding a memory address, the addresses and everything change whenever you restart the game. So let's see if we can maybe prove that. So we'll close the game. Let's uh, we'll just go to file and save. I want to save this in case I really screw up here. How long have I been recording? A very long time. Much longer than I ever have before. I really hope this works. Uh, yes, I want to replace it. We will close that. We will reopen it. We'll click yes, and then we'll restart the game. Uh, new game, launch. Stuff, stuff, stuff. Plus, minus, just to, again, manage code, make sure it's loaded in the memory. Can never fail, or it never hurts to be careful in that regard. We will go to activate the script. Let's see what we get. I don't know. I'm not totally convinced. We get nothing. So we can pull this out and copy the AOB spend point. We will paste it in here. Go to first. Oh, we got to go to AOB. Yeah, it's not helping us. There you go. So that one's working. We can find just one location. We will cut this whole thing out. We'll do uh, first scan, new scan, first scan. There you go. That's not finding anything. Why is that? It's probably because, as we were talking about, let's add that back. 
Um, as we were talking about, there's some uh, hard-coded memory address. So let's go to first scan, um, or we will chop off the, the last byte, the FF. Instead of doing the notepad way, we're just going to do it this way for because it's more sort of organic. We'll go to first scan now. We still get nothing. Do it again. Nothing. Just get rid of the, la the uh, next byte. It's probably going to be about four bytes before we get down to whatever we're looking for. Or uh, it's going to, we've gotten rid of three bytes so far. When we get rid of this fourth byte, if I had to bet the address is, it's going to pop up over here. And we'll probably get two hits. There you go. So how did I, you know, did I know that for a fact? And, and how did, how did I know that? I didn't know it because it, as the series has proved, I'm, I'm considerably wrong a lot. Basically, what's going on is, again, we had hard-coded the memory, or we had pulled out an array or byte string, or um, we had pulled out a series of bytes that was referencing an instruction that would that had a memory location sort of hard-coded in it, and that location changed. And memory locations are uh, what they call word sizes. Yeah, I'm going to stop this, and, and we're, we're going to pick this up in the next one.